Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. There's a popular infographic on the internet these days about cycling. It's got a picture of a bike and a car. And under the bike, it says, this one runs on fat and saves you money. Under the car, it says, this one runs on money and makes you fat. This week, we're off to the much warmer climbs of Bike City, aka Vancouver. Riding a bicycle is the most energy efficient form of transportation in the world. More efficient than walking or driving. And few cities in Canada are friendlier to bikes than Vancouver, a place we're calling Bike City. Cycling is so important for things like health and the environment and our economy. It really is a response to so many of the challenges that we're facing right now. And it also connects communities more. It's very social. That's Aaron O'Mellon, the executive director of Hub, Vancouver's largest cycling group. When you peel back the onion, you see that the humble bicycle connects to the environment, energy and the economy much more than you would imagine. People save a lot of money, especially with rising gas prices. People feel much healthier and they're proven to be healthier. Um, and then, of course, the environmental benefits of using less energy and having less greenhouse gas emissions. There's much more to it than just saving on gas. Since bike infrastructure is so cheap and lasts much longer than regular roads, cities end up getting good bang for their buck. Pedestrians and cyclists don't damage the infrastructure, you know, whereas heavy trucks and buses and, and automobiles uh, break down the road infrastructure and, and result in uh, you know, a lot of added costs in terms of maintenance. When we build a bike facility um, and a lot of the pedestrian facilities, they last for 100 years. That's Jerry Dolbravoni, a former pro football player and now the director of transportation with the city of Vancouver. He took up cycling as a way to stay in shape and to better understand the decisions the transportation boss was making on the ground. All of our facilities will be designed for all ages and ability, uh, so all of our facilities will be um, appropriate for non-confident cyclists, uh, for children, for seniors, uh, for women, and people that, that are interested. We know that there's many people that are interested in cycling, uh, but they're not comfortable riding next to cars. And so by building an all ages and ability network throughout the city, uh, we feel that we can get uh, that 60% that we know from studies that are interested in trying to cycle, um, but they're just concerned about riding next to cars. Uh, we feel confident that we can get them out on their bikes. That infrastructure isn't your typical paint on the road either. It's a network of bike boulevards, regular streets that have been turned into bike-friendly and separated bike lanes. They actually took a lane of traffic from the Burrard Street Bridge and dedicated it to cycling traffic. City Councillor Heather Deal. So that was a game changer. Once we did that, we put in two other separated lanes downtown, a north-south and an east-west, so that you could connect through the downtown core in completely separated bike lanes. Again, taking, taking space away from cars. Those were controversial, and they're in place. They've been in place for a couple of years now, and they are, we're seeing a surge in people using them, but we're also seeing a change in the types of people who are willing to bike downtown. We're starting to see families come downtown on their bikes. Families biking together are truly an indicator of a safe, effective bike infrastructure. To learn more about separated bike lanes, bike boulevards, and the numbers behind Vancouver's cycling prowess, head on down to greenenergyfutures.ca. We'd love to hear from you. Check out our Facebook page or send us a tweet or email. Thanks for watching. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.